We've all heard the story of the dodo, a flightless bird hunted to extinction by humans in the 1600s. But as pervasive as the story of the dodo might be, it is but a single entry in an ever-expanding list of species driven out of existence by us humans. With all that's going on in the world today, many of us might not realize that we're actually living in the midst of an ongoing mass extinction event that has been taking place for the last 10,000 years. Geologists are referring to this extinction event as the Holocene extinction, also known as the sixth mass extinction, because believe it or not, extinction events are surprisingly common when looking back at Earth's history through the lens of the geologic time scale. And while there is no general consensus as to when this extinction event started, there is abundant evidence indicating that current extinction rates are anywhere between 100 to 1,000 times higher than natural background extinction rates, or the rate at which animals went extinct before humans started killing everything. You see, extinction is a natural phenomenon that occurs with or without human intervention, and scientists have estimated that before humans spread their influence across the globe, 10% of species were lost every million years, 30% every 10 million years, and 65% every 100 million years. For reference, in order for an extinction event to be considered a mass extinction, about 75% of all species need to perish within a relatively short period of geologic time. And in the last 500 years, human activity is known to have forced at least 869 species into extinction. But those are just the ones that we know about and can definitively link to human activity. While it is difficult to pinpoint exactly how many species we are driving to extinction each year, estimates range from 8,700 per year to tens or even hundreds of thousands per year. There is no denying that species are going extinct at an unprecedented rate. And that's a shame, because there are some really cool animals that we will never have the opportunity of observing in the wild, or anywhere else for that matter. They're erased, forever. Unless we find ourselves living out a Jurassic Park situation, in which case, God help us all. You see, us humans have a pretty bad track record of destroying just about everything that crosses our path, and, in my opinion, no greater example of this can be found than in the colonization of North America. In short, European settlement in North America has irrevocably altered the ecological composition of the continent, from introducing new species to extirpating native ones and literally moving entire mountains and waterways, European settlers have radically transformed the North American ecosystem in more ways than many. Imagine an America teeming with native parrots, flocks of pigeons so large that they literally darken out the sky, and ferocious apex predators capable of mauling a human to death before he even knew he was being stalked. This description might sound nothing like modern day America, with its concrete jungles and urban sprawl, but if you were lucky enough to have lived in pre-colonial America, then what I just described would be your reality. But since you're not a vampire, and everyone's dead from that era, I thought I'd compile a short list of some of the fauna that once called this continent home, but that we will never have the pleasure of observing with our own eyes. The ivory-billed woodpecker was one such animal you might find in 1600s America. A native to the southeastern US, this bird was at its time considered to be the second largest woodpecker in the world with a wingspan of up to two and a half feet. In case you were wondering, the largest woodpecker in the world is called the Imperial Woodpecker, and it is native to Mexico. But it's believed to be extinct too, so that leaves the Pileated Woodpecker, the largest extant species of woodpecker in the United States. The ivory-billed woodpecker is thought to have gone extinct sometime in the 1900s, with the last verified sighting taking place in 1940. Now, believe me, this bird is almost certainly extinct, but there are some bird nuts out there that contest this probability. There have been innumerable claims of ivory-billed woodpecker sightings throughout the eastern half of the US since 1940, but none of these claims have been able to provide any substantial evidence. The ivory-billed woodpecker is considered to be somewhat of a holy grail among the birding community due to its purported rarity, but I personally consider it to be more of a sasquatch of the birding community, as it simply doesn't exist. The demise of this species is contributed to deforestation and overhunting, which coincidentally happen to be two of America's favorite pastimes. 
Between 1850 and 1900, the United States cleared more forest area than in any other period throughout history, averaging 13 square miles of forest cut down every day for 50 years. It is during this period that the ivory-billed woodpecker saw its greatest population decline, and while the forest clearing rates eventually stabilized in the 1900s, unfortunately, the same cannot be said about the population growth rates of the ivory-billed woodpecker. What few birds that didn't perish during the Great Clearing were shamelessly shot and killed by trophy hunters and professional collectors, and the bird is generally believed by experts to have perished sometime around the 1940s. While this species is currently listed as critically endangered by the IUCN, in September of 2021, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service proposed that the ivory-billed woodpecker be declared extinct. But even as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is trying to close the book on this species, there are still those out there that are not willing to discount their survival. And a recent surge of articles concerning the conservation status of this bird have surfaced online. Be that as it may, in my opinion, this bird is almost certainly extinct. And even if it isn't extinct, there is no denying that this next bird absolutely is. The Passenger Pigeon Passenger pigeons were once the most abundant bird species in North America. They migrated in enormous, and I mean enormous, flocks, which numbered upwards to 5 billion. These flocks were frequently described as being so dense that they blackened out the sky. The passenger pigeon shared a similar fate to the ivory-billed woodpeckers, with its extinction being attributed primarily to deforestation and overhunting, with a particular emphasis on the latter. But while it's not surprising that 19th century humans were able to hunt the relatively sparsely numbered ivory-billed woodpecker population into oblivion, I find it incredible that they were able to hunt the passenger pigeon with a population size in the billions into extinction in such a short amount of time. Seriously, this was no small feat, as these birds were estimated to have accounted for between 25 and 40 percent of the total land bird population in the United States. They must have tasted incredible. The passenger pigeon's historic population is roughly equivalent to the number of birds that overwinter in the United States every year in the early 21st century. And because they were so abundant throughout the entirety of the U.S., their disappearance left a massive niche to fill throughout many habitats across the country. The last wild passenger pigeon is thought to have been shot in 1901, and the last captive pigeon, named Martha, died in 1914 in the Cincinnati Zoo. But the misfortune of the passenger pigeon wasn't a tragic story for everyone, as the white-footed mouse, a species that fed on the same food source as the passenger pigeon, realized exponential growth in their population numbers shortly after the passenger pigeon went extinct. Unfortunately for us modern humans, though, these now ubiquitous mice are hosts to the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. But gosh, were those some tasty birds. Unlike our next extinct bird, which, according to John Audubon, was poisonous. Yet we still managed to hunt it to extinction. This bird was known as the Carolina parakeet. That's right, the United States used to have a native species of parrot. How cool is that? Now, when I think of parrots, I immediately associate them with a jungle ecosystem, not with old growth forests along rivers and swamps, which was the preferred habitat of the Carolina parakeet. And believe it or not, the U.S. has not one, but three native species of parrots. The other two being the thick-billed parrot, a former inhabitant of the American Southwest that has since been extirpated, and the green parakeet, which can still be observed inhabiting the absolute southernmost tip of Texas. But we haven't driven those two into oblivion just quite yet, so they're not of concern to us for the time being. Anyway, reports of the Carolina parakeet date all the way back to the 1500s, where an early English merchant reported that explorers in North America do testify that they have found in these countries parrots. And parrots there were. During the peak of their existence, they inhabited a range that spanned at least 28 states in what was, and still is, the northernmost range of any known species of parrot to ever exist. Although there were no scientific surveys conducted on this species, it is estimated that their population numbered anywhere from tens of thousands to a few million birds. But unlike our delectable passenger pigeon, this bird was probably poisonous, with reports stating that cats apparently died after eating them. 
However, if you think their inedibility did anything to discourage early American hunters from murdering them in droves, then boy have I got a bridge to sell you. Fast forward to just 300 years after they were first reported and this species is already on the brink of extinction, with their numbers being reduced so significantly that sighting them outside of Florida, just one state out of their former 28 statewide range, had become a rarity. And by the turn of the 20th century, it was all but over for our poor feathered friends, with the last known wild specimen having been shot in 1910, and the last captive specimen dying in, where else but the Cincinnati Zoo in 1918, just four years after our girl Martha died, and in the same cage no less. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think that there's something going on at the Cincinnati Zoo. In 1939, the bird was officially declared extinct, and although the exact mechanisms of extinction are said to be unknown, I think it's safe to say that overhunting and deforestation certainly didn't help. About 720 skins and 16 skeletons are all that remain of this once prolific bird. The specimens are housed in various museums around the world, and analyzable DNA has been extracted from them so they might be resurrected when humanity reaches its Jurassic Park phase. But I wouldn't go holding your breath. Moving on to our next and final bird on the list, we have the heath hen, a subspecies of the greater prairie chicken. Purportedly the tastiest bird on our list, these poor birds were hunted extensively as an easy food source by early colonial settlers. Subsequently, the heath hen's population declined rapidly, having been completely extirpated from the contiguous United States by the late 1800s, with only a small population surviving on the island of Martha's Vineyard, located just off the coast of Massachusetts. Efforts were made to restore their numbers, and while initially these efforts were mildly successful, with the population rebounding from less than 100 to nearly 2,000 in the early 1900s, they ultimately proved to be too little, too late, as severe winters, predation by other species, and disease, as well as a destructive 1916 fire which disrupted their nesting season that year, all worked in tandem to plague the floundering heath hen population. After years of a vacillating population, and despite being afforded some of the best conservation efforts humanity had to offer at the time, by the year 1928, the writing was on the wall for this species as only one male bird remained, affectionately named Booming Bin. Booming Bin the Heath Hen held out until about 1932, around which time he disappeared near his old stomping grounds. His remains were never found, and he was most likely taken out by a predator. The heath hen was one of the first bird species that Americans tried to save from extinction, and although they were unsuccessful in doing so, this was the first instance of Americans passing state legislation in an attempt to preserve an endangered species, setting a precedent which paved the way for future conservation efforts. And incidentally, the heath hen is currently subject to a de-extinction project that plans to bring the species back from the dead by editing the genome of the closely related greater prairie chicken. Since the two species are so closely related, they just need to adjust a few pieces of the genetic code and voila, we have a genetically indistinguishable copy of the long extinct heath hen. So before you get all down and out about never getting to see some of these magnificent birds, just remember, we are currently living in the midst of a biotechnology revolution, the implications of which are seemingly infinite. Who knows, sometime in the near future it might just be possible to purchase a resurrected pet Carolina parakeet.